Praise the Lord again on this afternoon. We are grateful to be in your presence for another Bible class set. And we're thankful that the Lord has throughout this week been gracious to all of us to allow us uh, this space and time that we can examine some scriptures that I feel certain this particular set will be a blessing to all of our spiritual lives. Uh, the topic of the lesson that we are going to be entertaining on this afternoon is entitled The Infallible Word of God. The infallible word of God. In the day and time in particular in which we're living in, we can certainly say that many things that we trusted in and things that were stable and concrete uh, for the past 20 years are now standing on shaky ground. Things that used to have value, uh, many of those things because other things have come along and taken its place Amen. It's no longer as valuable as it used to be. Uh, so that moves our thought to what can we depend on? If knowledge keeps increasing and if things of life keep changing, where can we put our dependency? Uh, what can we come to know uh, that will never change from generation to generation? And of course, that would be the word of God. Uh, so I want to us to take a careful look at this particular setting, this lesson on this afternoon as we uh, really dig into the fact that you can put your trust in the Word of God. Uh, many are writing erroneous things about the Word of God. Many are coming to their own interpretations, uh, trying to make the Word of God fit their particular uh, situation or condition versus them lining up with the Word of God. The Bible puts it like this when it comes to the word of God. It says, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Uh, the word of God is not going to change. The word of God was designed and given to humanity that we might change for the better. So we're going to uh, take a little bit of time here, uh, look at some things that I feel will be a blessing to us as we examine again the topic of the infallible word of God. The Bible is and always has been the most authoritative book of all books ever written. It does not matter what manual you pick up. It does not matter which author may have written a book or a particular series. Always remember that in your study and gaining of knowledge that the Bible is the most authoritative book. In other words, the Bible is the finality of any conclusion. And, uh, if you're going to come to a reasonable answer of anything in life, amen, if you base that answer on what the Word of God has said about that subject matter, you'll always be found to be correct. So the Bible is the most authoritative book of all books ever written. It is the only book that deals with every question or concern of mankind. Amen. You can pick up the Holy Bible and uh, it deals, amen, with every question and every concern of mankind. It is the only book that is considered to be infallible. Infallible by definition means incapable of making mistakes or of being wrong. Amen. Again, infallible by definition simply means incapable of making mistakes or of being wrong. You will not find any errors in the Bible. There are no mistakes. There are no contradictions. Amen. Whenever you read one scripture, you will not find another scripture contradicting uh, the previous scripture. I like to use this term. The word of God is woven together. There's no breaks in it. I understand we got books to help us find our way around it. And we got chapters and verses. But the word of God is a whole context. Amen. It's not a book. Amen. That's broken up. Amen. It's not the ideology of men. We'll look at that a little bit closer as we go along. Uh, the most comprehensive revelation of God's word came through his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus reveals what God is like, how he thinks, how he feels and how he acts. He gave us a purple or a personal rather amen, example of who God is. That is Jesus Christ. Amen. He personally amen, presented himself amen, unto mankind that we may better understand, amen, what God is like, how he feels about certain things, amen, what he thinks, amen, and how he acts. 
The word, of, the word of the record of God has been preserved through the writings of the Holy Bible. Amen. The record of God has been preserved. Amen. Through the writings of the Holy Bible. So if you want to know about God, amen. If you want to know, amen, how he presented himself to mankind. Amen. If you want to know, amen, what finality on this side of life and what eternity is going to be all about. Amen. The Bible is the only book that give us those answers. The Bible is the source for what we believe about God, what we believe about humanity, what we believe about heaven and what we believe about salvation. And again, in today's lesson, it is designed to affirm our belief in the authority of God's holy scriptures. Now, you've heard me use that word authority two or three times. And I said that to say this. Uh, there are many great books out there. I'm adamant reader. A man of different writings. And I have certain writers that uh, write on a secular and religious amen, format that I love reading. But I do not read those books amen, to be the finality or the answer to what I'm searching for. The majority of my reading uh, brings about an inspiration amen, that leads me to amen, what I already know of the word of God. Amen. That better opens my understanding. But those writers Amen. Never become the explanation. And this is where, amen, many studiers make their mistakes when they begin to, amen, lacking, amen, their finality of their learning, amen, to what their favorite writer may be saying about the subject matter. Amen. You got to be careful about that. Uh, scripture always interprets scripture. And I'm not saying we shouldn't study outside uh, materials. But when you study those outside materials and your finality uh, winds up believing what that writer has written, you make sure that you have scripture that support, amen, that uh, uh, writer's uh, reading that you are uh, being a partaker of. Amen. The word of God is the most authoritative book that there is. It is finality. Amen. And every answer that we're seeking for in this earth realm. Let's look at some facts concerning the Bible. The Bible was written by more than 40 authors over a period of about 1600 years. The Bible contains 66 books, but it is not a collection of books. It has one author, but many different writings. Now note that uh, the, the Bible has one author, amen, but it has many different writers. Amen. The, the author of the Bible is God himself. Amen. But he used, amen, several different men, amen, to put it in print that you and I might have a record, amen, of the things that God have left to us, amen, pertaining to the word of God. Amen. Again, it has one author, but many different writers. Those that God inspired to write came from the background of kings, philosophers, fishermen, physicians, Tax collectors, scholars, poets, and farmers. Amen. You see, God used men of every facet of life. Amen. As he inspired them. Amen. To write. Amen. The word of God. They were from various parts of the world, such as Italy, Greece, Babylon, Persia, and Israel. Amen. God did not just go to one particular part of the world. Amen. And grab this particular uh, group of people. Amen. But he went throughout the whole world. Amen. To use dip men of different backgrounds, amen, different lifestyles, amen, to pin to us on record as we have it today, the word of God. Many of them never met or knew of each other personally, but they all wrote in perfect agreement concerning the divine message of God. Now, that has to be to God. Amen. No two or three authors can sit down and write on the same subject matter. Amen. And write in such unison. Amen. And then, amen, no 10 authors can sit down and write on different subject matters and neither of those subject matters, amen, contradict the other. Amen. Because we're dealing with the ideology of man. Amen. And his own, amen, humanistic ability. Amen. So this is why God, amen, bypassed the mind of man and the knowledge of man. And the Bible tells us, amen, that these men wrote as they were inspired by God. That's why we say the Bible, amen, has many different writers, but there's only one author, and that author is God himself. The Bible is the bestseller and most printed book of any book that's ever been written. 
no matter how great an author may have been deemed to be. Amen. No author, amen, was so good that, amen, his work, amen, outprinted, amen, the printing of the Bible. The Bible has been translated in over 349 different languages. Over 5 billion copies of the Bible have been printed worldwide. Boy, that, that, that's, that's a lot of Bible there. Amen. When it comes to the support and validity of the scriptures, historical findings support the evidence of over 66,000 manuscripts and scrolls. Amen. So we don't have the word of God, amen, on record to us, amen, without some evidence, amen, behind it. That's, amen, that man can say, amen, it's not of God. Amen. Over 66,000 manuscripts and strolls. All right, let's look at the topic of what is the origin of the Bible. This question has been asked by millions. Amen. That is, where did the Bible come from? Amen. Millions of people have asked the question, where did the Bible come from? Let's take a, a brief walk down history and see what we can come up with. The Bible supports the fact that God used holy men of God to speak and pen the writing of the Bible. Amen. God used, amen, holy men of God to speak and pen the word of God. Amen. They were inspired by God. In other words, the influence of God's spirit, amen, came upon them and they spoke and they wrote, amen, exactly as God would have them to speak and write. And you got to just know, amen, when God moves upon an individual like that, Amen. There is no error. Amen. In the finality of that product. Amen. Which we have the day, which is called the Bible. Amen. Man is man is fallible and subject to error. Amen. Man, man is fallible. Amen. He can and he does. And he will. Amen. Make error. But God is infallible. Amen. That's why he utilizes spirit. Amen. To move upon man. Amen. To leave us a record of the holy word of God. God breathed out unto man the infallible word, so that what they wrote was the inerrant, which means free from error, word of God. Amen. What they wrote was the inerrant, amen, free from error, amen, the word of God. Let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse number 16. All scripture, not just part of it, amen, not just the Old Testament, not just the New Testament, but all scriptures given by inspiration of God, and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The part I want you to get is that when you pick up the Holy Bible, amen, all scripture, amen, is given by inspiration of God. Second Peter 1 and 21 helps us a little bit better. It says, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Even though men at that time were not filled with the spirit of God. Amen. The spirit of God came upon those that he will use. And the Bible said these holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Next, we want to look at, amen, the fact that holy men wrote within the confinements of their character. Amen. Uh, you, you cannot be something that you're not. Amen. Uh, the world is trying to redefine uh, anything that has any sense of stability today. Uh, 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 they was trying to say that. Uh, a few years back, a man that they had the right to change their genders. Now people are, are saying they're non-gender and <laughs> they're nothing. And that does not make any sense. Amen. And I, I said that to say this, we can do what we would do, but we cannot change what God has established. Amen. A man may change his, uh, his, his male name to a feminine name, but that does not make him feminine. Amen. A man may put on women's clothes, walk like a woman, talk like a woman, but that does not make him feminine. There's no way. Amen. Thank God he can change. Amen. What God has created. Amen. God made him male and female. Amen. And we do not have the liberty and we do not have the authority. Amen. To cause God to identify us as something different. Amen. So, so I want you to see, amen, uh, the, this, that's, that's one of the attacks, amen, that the devil would love for us to believe, amen, that you can change, amen, who you are. God did not worry about changing, amen, who these men were. He allowed his spirit upon them to do the work, amen. But you also see, amen, as they wrote, 
Amen. They wrote within the confinement of their character. Amen. Many times, amen, you will find them utilizing certain, certain principles in the Bible, amen, based on the character of who they were as an individual. When God used men to speak and pen the word, he used them within the definition of their personal character. That's why you should always strive, amen, to be who you are. Don't ever try to be someone else. Amen. Now, I'm not saying we don't strive to better ourselves, but do not try to walk around, amen, walking in the character and the personality of another individual. Amen. God wants to use you, amen, as you are. This is why each book reflects the writer's personal characteristics in style and vocabulary. The writer's personalities are often expressed in their opinions, their thoughts, their confusions, and even their fears. For example, Luke the physician often used medical terms. Paul, being a scholar of Greek literature, often quotes from Greek poets. God used human writers, but these men did not always understand everything they wrote. Amen. Uh, when God used Moses to, amen, give us the penmanship, amen, of Genesis, uh, Moses did not understand in the beginning God created. In other words, amen, they, they, we know for certain that he was nowhere, amen, to be found, amen, whenever this event took place. Amen. But this is another example of how God moved upon men and they wrote. Amen. And these men wrote in the capacity of who they were. Their, their character, amen, played a big part. Amen. And us being able to recognize, amen, who they were as men. Daniel chapter 12. Let's look at verses 8 and 9. And I heard, but I understood not. And I heard, but I understood not. These men Amen. Pinned a lot of things that, amen, that were inspired upon them by God, but many of them did not understand what they were writing. And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? Listen, verse 9. And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of end. Amen. God, amen, used these men to pin. Leave on record for us today. Amen. The word of God. Amen. Many things. Amen. That they did not even understand as they wrote. Amen. Which proves that this were not their personal minds. Amen. This was not their personal desires. Amen. These words that are left on record for us today is the inspiration of God. Amen. God inspired them, came upon them, moved upon them. Amen. To leave the record of the word of God that we have on record today. No matter how much man may search, amen, no matter how much, amen, those that don't believe in Christ may try to prove it wrong, amen, the more they mess with the word of God, the more they prove it to be correct, amen, because they cannot justly, they can listen to that word, they cannot justly, amen, identify any error in the Bible, for there is none, amen. So what you'll find many times Amen. People that don't want you to believe the word of God will try to make you think that the word of God could not have been literal. Amen. That this was just a fascination of somebody's mind. Amen. But this word applies to our life. Amen. This word deals, amen, with our daily situations. Amen. It even deals, amen, with our state of eternity. All right. Let's look at the next point. Amen. And we'll close after this. Is the Old Testament still relevant today? Amen. Many individuals are always trying to get out from under the word of God. I do not know why. Amen. Man wants to do away with the thing. Amen. That helps him the most, which is the word of God. Amen. The thing that answers to everything in our life. Amen. You find man trying to keep cutting off. Amen. And foregoing certain parts of the word of God. Amen. So, so many will wrestle amen, with validity and the necessity of the Old Testament, amen. But I, the Old Testament is just like your body, amen. Everything in your body, God put it there, amen, for a particular purpose. Even though medical science may not identify certain, amen, uses of certain parts of our body, amen. God knew what he was doing, amen. Thank God when he tempered the body together, amen. So when God gave us, amen, the writings of the Old Testament, Amen. God gave us the writings of the New Testament. Amen. God gave us something that's eternal. Amen. Forever, Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Amen. Thank God. So the word of God, amen, is not going to change. 
And there's no part of the word of God, amen, that we can throw away. Every part, every, amen, uh, jot and every tittle of the word of God is necessary, amen, for us to make the proper preparations, amen, to see the Lord in peace. Many current teachings of the day exclude the necessity of the Old Testament. And a lot of people like to get rid of things that, uh, that, that, that they don't want to abide by. Amen. And other people like to get rid of things that they don't, they don't, or they don't understand. Uh, this is why many times uh, people have gone to yard sales, amen, and bought uh, something very cheap that was very valuable. Amen. Because the person that had it, amen, did not understand and know its worth or its value. And because many people do not know the value of the Old Testament, amen, they strive to just, amen, count it as being useless. Amen. They try to just throw it away. Amen. But you can literally, amen, when you come to understand salvation, when you come to understand the work of Jesus Christ, amen, you can see him, amen, appearing all over, amen, the Old Testament writing. And then you see him fulfilled in action in the New Testament writing. Amen. So you would not have had a foresight, amen, of Christ if it was not for, amen, the Old Testament writing. Amen. So don't throw away something that give you vision. Amen. The Old Testament literally give you vision to Christ. And then here comes the New Testament. Amen. That comes that gives you a pattern that gives you a map. Amen. Gives you a directive. Amen. So you can attain to that vision of Christ. Amen. Which we get to see in the Old Testament writing. So again, many amen, current teachers of the day, they want to exclude the necessity of the Old Testament. Many of the day will state if it is not in the New Testament, we do not have to obey it. What a great error. Amen. If you if it's not in the new new test, if it's not in the new te uh, testament and you say you don't have to obey it. How about the Ten Commandments? Amen. That came from the Old Testament. Amen. Are we saying we don't have to obey? Amen. Uh, the Ten Commandments. Now, there are some practices. Amen. There are some things that they practice. Amen. Some ceremonies that was kept in the Old Testament. Amen. That we no longer have to attain to today. Amen. Because Christ has come. In other words, he has come and fulfilled. Amen. Those practices of the Old Testament. Amen. Uh, the Bible tells us the Old Testament was a schoolmaster. Amen. But now, amen, that Christ has come. Amen. He has fulfilled. Amen. Those places and those practices of the Old Testament. So now salvation. Amen. Is of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It is a gross error to exclude the necessity of the Old Testament. Amen. You're going to miss, amen, a great part, amen, of your understanding of the scriptures, amen, and of your walk and understanding of God's purpose, amen, if you exclude the Old Testament, amen. Let's look a little bit further, if you will. It is the Old Testament that clearly portrays the story of redemption through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is the Old Testament that gives us the Ten Commandments by which we are to shape our lives in conformity to the word of God. So you don't want to throw away, amen, the thing that gives you the direction, amen, for which you are trying to accomplish or reach. Jesus Christ himself placed his approval upon the Old Testament scriptures. Amen. He himself, amen, placed his, amen, own approval, amen, upon the Old Testament scriptures. It is, it is from these scriptures he taught and quoted. Now, that, that's amazing. Amen. That Jesus Christ thought it was good enough. Amen. For him to quote and teach from it. Amen. Certainly. Amen. Is still usable to us here today. Let's look at Matthew chapter five. Look there with us, if you will, at verse number 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law. That's the Old Testament or the prophets. Amen. Those men didn't matter. Yes, they do matter. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Amen. Now, if the Old Testament was to be fulfilled, amen, and Christ is the one that is to fulfill it and did fulfill it, amen, you will not have an understanding of what he was trying to accomplish if you throw the Old Testament away. Amen. So the two, amen, are compatible one to the, to the other. Amen. You cannot have a completion if you don't have the Old Testament. You cannot have a completion if you don't have the New Testament. Amen. In closing. A proper approach to the Bible is to accept it as the infallible, authoritative word of God. That's how you want to approach the Bible. You do not approach the Bible on denominational settings. You do not approach the Bible on what you think 
on what you feel on what you believe or what you want. That's where many are making mistakes today. Amen. You approach the Bible as the infallible, authoritative word of God. Now, when we say infallible, there's no error in it. We say authoritative. There is nothing that has more authority than the Bible. In our studying and learnings, there will be some things that we will not clearly understand. Our lack of understanding does not make the word any less important. Should you reason things in the Bible that, amen, you don't immediately understand and may not ever understand. Amen. Uh, many don't understand in this Old Testament, even in the new, why God did what he did. Amen. But you can know that at least salvation was somewhere. Amen. In the picture. Amen. Because he gave us the word that we might be redeemed back to God. Amen. So I want you to understand that even though we amen, sometimes may run into things that we don't understand. Amen. It does not make the word of God of any less important. It is God's holy word that should always govern our standards of thought and conduct. God's word alone is beginning and ending. Amen. So I pray today that this lesson, amen, the infallible word of God has given you a better insight, amen, to enhance, amen, your faith in the word of God. Amen. Again, amen. I love studying. Amen. I love reading books. Amen. But I do not allow, amen, any study or any book, amen, to speak more authoritative than the word of God. I mostly use, amen, uh, my study and my reading for inspiration, amen, to wake up in me. Well, that's what I mean by inspiration, to wake up in me, amen, the word of God that God has already given to me, amen. But I never use outside study, amen, as a finality of what the answer is, amen. The answer must always, amen, come from the word of God. And how do I know that's the answer that came from the word of God? How do I know the answer I have is that word? Amen. Because it cannot run interference with anything in the Bible. Amen. So I thank God for you today. I pray uh, that this lesson has proven, amen, to be a help to you. Amen. That as you pick up the word of God, amen, that you'll know, amen, that as you attain uh, to the writings of the scriptures, amen, that that word is correct. Amen. That word is not going to change. Amen. We have made errors. We have made mistakes uh, many times. Amen. In our spiritual walks. Amen. By thinking a document. Amen. Or thinking a man's collection of his words. Amen. Is the finality. Amen. Of what God is saying to us. Never has been. I'm not saying man cannot write from his learning of the scriptures. Amen. But do not let that writing. Amen. Ever be your foundation. Amen. At the best, let it be an, a tool of inspiration that brings you back to the word of God. Amen. For the finality of what you believe. So I thank God for your saints. You be blessed. Amen. And we pray that God will keep you safe and sound. Amen. Throughout this week until he blesses us all to be able to come together once again. Amen. For our worship service this Sunday morning. Be blessed.